All right, welcome back to another video. My name is Ian Major. I'm an entrepreneur, Bitcoin pleb, and all around raging capitalist. And in today's video, I am very excited to be bringing you part two to the cold card tutorial. Uh, if you haven't watched part one, pause this, open up in another tab the link I'm providing in the description down below so you can watch part one. Uh, it basically goes through all the kind of setup steps for the cold card. And we ended that last video having set up the device uh, and we are now ready to use it for Bitcoin transactions. Uh, that will be the subject of today's video. And specifically what I wanna go through today is how to use a combination of your cold card and Wasabi Wallet, which I've also done prior videos on. And so today is kind of building up to uh, this crescendo of being able to send what are called partially signed Bitcoin transactions. That is to say, using your cold card device to sign Bitcoin transactions without ever having connected this to an internet connected device such as a laptop. So very, very cool. Again, this is taking a step back, uh, the kind of ultimate in security for cold storage. And so this would be for you know your main stack that you don't intend to really send or use kind of that often. Uh, but when you do want to send funds and you want to do it as securely as possible, uh, this is your go-to. So it should be an excellent video you'll want to watch all the way through. Uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, great to have you here. Uh, hope you enjoy the video and what you're about to see. If you do, uh, consider subscribing so more folks will uh, see the great content that we're churning out. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. <music> All right, so we are back. Again, if you haven't checked out part one of this tutorial, be sure to pause this video, check it out in the link that I've provided in the description down below, because um, we are picking up right where we left off in that video. So we've basically set up the cold card uh, and I've got this uh, connected to the cold power uh, device that I got from uh, cold card. But again, you could have any kind of power bar um, if uh, assuming you're planning on following along with uh, essentially never plugging this into an internet connected device. And so uh, I also have the micro SD card loaded in the back of the cold card. Uh, and so we're ready to roll. Um, so what we're gonna do in this first step is actually pretty simple. Uh, we'll scroll down to advanced. Uh, we'll then go to micro SD card. Uh, and then we will go to export wallet. So conceptually, what is it we're trying to achieve here? We're basically trying to essentially take the public key of this uh, cold card, of our cold card wallet, and put it into some other interface so that we can interact with it. Um, and so I'll, I'll hit export wallet, and you'll see that there are a couple different options here. There's one for Bitcoin Core, Electrum, uh, Wasabi Wallet and generic JSON. So a JSON file is what will um, be the output of this. And so as you can probably guess based on this video, we are going to select uh, Wasabi Wallet. I'll go ahead and hit the check. And it explains, this saves a skeleton Wasabi Wallet file onto the micro SD card. Uh, you can then open that file in Wasabi without ever connecting this cold card to a computer. The file created is sensitive in terms of privacy, but should not compromise your funds directly. And what it means by that is, you know, we're not doing anything with the private keys um, within this device. The private key is always gonna stay in this device. And so really all we're taking is the kind of public key um, so that we can uh, view our balance, we can uh, receive funds to the wallet address, et cetera. And so uh, we're all good with that. I'll hit the check again, and it says generating. Boom, Wasabi wallet file written, new Wasabi uh, dot JSON. Um, and I think that's all we get. All right, so great. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pop out the micro SD card. I'm gonna put it in my computer, and I'm gonna meet you guys in Wasabi. All right, so here we are. What I've done is I've opened up Wasabi Wallet. 
I'm not going to spend a ton of time on Wasabi Wallet per se in today's video. Uh, I've done kind of an entire um, video on Wasabi Wallet, walkthrough, etc. Uh, and so I will also be sure to link that in the description down below. And so in today's video, it really is the kind of culmination of a couple of uh, what we've sort of learned in past videos. And then I also have my micro SD card, uh, which you can see has the new Wasabi uh, JSON file that we just created, along with the firmware update that we um, were working with in the prior cold card part one tutorial. And so what we want to do uh, is pretty simple. Um, we want to come into Wasabi and we want to say open wallets folder. And so this has now opened, uh, you can see there is a JSON file corresponding to each of the wallets that I already have uh, generated. And so all I need to do is come over to my SD card and drag the new Wasabi wallet into uh, the wallets here. Um, I have seen prior uh, kind of videos, probably from a little bit ago, where on a Mac, that direct drag and drop can be problematic. And so if you are on a Mac and if you are seeing um, any, any kind of issues, not necessarily with this first step, uh, but when we get to some of the later steps, just know that you can always uh, pull this onto your desktop uh, instead of pulling it kind of directly to and from your micro SD card. Uh, just a quick sidebar there. And so uh, you can you can rename this. And in fact, I will do that. Uh, so I will name this maybe CC1. And there we have it. And so this is now uh, created. Now, I won't yet see it reflected here in Wasabi. And so all I need to do is kind of exit out and uh, just reboot it. And I now see my uh, my newly created wallet. So this is great. I'll now go and say load wallet. And you can see it's now loading and it's correctly detected that this is a hardware wallet, given that I have imported it from the file that my cold card generated. All right, so we've got our, uh, our cold card wallet. So this is great. And as per the Wasabi tutorial I've previously done, you'll see that we basically get the same uh, kind of options. Um, you'll notice that uh, conspicuously absent is the coin join feature. Uh, which is not possible to do directly on a cold uh, wallet, unfortunately. Uh, but nonetheless, you'll see everything else. And what we're ultimately working towards today is this advanced tab, where if I open this up, you'll see uh, build transaction, right? And that is what we're going to ultimately go to. Uh, and you can see it looks, you know, pretty much like a like a normal kind of um, uh, send you know, interface, uh, but we'll, we'll talk through kind of how that works. First though, we need to obviously fund the wallet. And so to do that, we're just gonna go to the receive tab here, or uh, you can navigate across the top of these tabs. Um, again, check out my, my video on Wasabi where I go into this in detail. And so what I'll now do is generate a receive address after I put in a label for good coin management. And then uh, I will come right back once we have uh, funded the wallet. All right, so we have funded our cold card uh, wallet with some Bitcoin. And so now we wanna demonstrate how to send that Bitcoin. Um, keep in mind that you can directly connect your cold card device to, in this case, a laptop. And if you were to do that, you would basically be able to just directly use this send tab. Um, and I'll comment on this a bit later in the video. Um, and what would happen is you would have a message come up on your cold card that says, hey, you know, here are the transaction details. Are you okay with this? And you would click the check mark. 
and that would broadcast it uh, and uh, apply your signature to that transaction. Keep in mind, though, the pros and cons of that, uh, right, versus the kind of fully air-gapped version uh, that we are walking through now, uh, which is certainly more secure. And so for that approach, what we want to do is hit the advanced uh, menu on the right and then go to build transaction. And indeed, you'll see that the interface itself is essentially, uh, essentially identical. Um, and so what I can do is go ahead and select the uh, Bitcoin that I want to send. So my UTXO here, my unspent transaction output. And I want to send these funds to, um, I've already created and generated a receive address for another wallet. And so that'll be pasted directly in here. And then I'll label this with something uh, intuitive, you know, maybe test partially signed Bitcoin transaction. Uh, I'll go ahead and send the max. So I'll send kind of all of what I have. And then keep in mind, you can control, uh, you know, how much you're willing to spend in fees. Uh, keep in mind that fees are um, elevated currently. Right now it's April 20th. Uh, and so you had all the kind of mining capacity or a lot of the mining capacity in, uh, in China, you know, go down due to outages. And so that has uh, certainly increased fees. That being said, I mean, I could do a whole separate video on that. Uh, I think it's pretty pretty amazing to see that the biggest the biggest single day reduction in hash rate since something like November 2017, and yet the protocol is still churning out uh, blocks. Right, you know the blocks are, or at least for a couple days, we're going a bit more uh, slowly. Uh, but I believe we're back to now roughly every you know 10 minutes you have a block getting added, uh, and so it just shows the resiliency. Right, you know, big chunk of uh, mining capacity goes down and the protocol just keeps on operating. Honey Badger don't care. Uh, and so anyway, that thought that was uh, kind of interesting that we've seen in the last few days. Anyway, um, I'm in no particular rush. And so I'll go ahead and keep, you know, the fees a little bit lower. And so now I'll go ahead and hit build transaction. All right. So that's, so I've built the transaction. And so now it's given me some of the different information here. And I basically now want to uh, export the transaction. Uh, and you'll see that I can come over to my, my SD card and I can go ahead and save it there. And I can confirm that the partially signed Bitcoin transaction was successfully exported. Uh, as I was alluding to earlier, there have been in the past issues in doing that on a Mac. And so you can always, um, uh, you can always export that instead of directly to your, uh, to your SD card, you could direct, you could uh, export it to the desktop, for example, and then just drag, uh, drag it over. Okay, so we now have built the transaction. And so now what I'm going to do is take the micro SD card uh, that we've now put the partially signed Bitcoin transaction on. And I will meet you back uh, and when we have the micro SD card back in the cold card. All right, we're back. Um, so again, I've just taken the micro SD card from the computer and I've put it into the cold card. And now we can just say ready to sign. And so I'll hit the checkbox. It'll say reading, validating, and it'll say OK to send. And it'll play back all the information of the transaction. So it'll give me the amount that I'm sending, uh, the address, the uh, network fee, and then it says press OK to approve and sign transaction, or you can abort by hitting X. So I will go ahead and hit check. It says wait. Signing. And it now says partially signed Bitcoin transaction is signed. So I've now used the private key on my cold card device to sign that transaction. And so now it's a complete transaction but I still need to broadcast it to the network, right? This is not connected to the internet. And so you can see that uh, this file has now uh, been generated 
and we have finalized the transaction. It's ready for broadcast. And now the final step in the process, I will take the micro SD card back out of the cold card and put it into the computer for one last time and we'll broadcast the now completed transaction to the network so that it executes. So I've got my micro SD card back in the computer. You'll see the original partially signed Bitcoin transaction. Uh, you will see the kind of transaction file and then you'll see the final signed partially signed Bitcoin transaction. So that is what we are after. And so if we come back to Wasabi Wallet, uh, you may still be on the prior screen that we left on. Uh, I had to restart my computer so that it would read my micro SD card. I think I didn't eject it correctly the prior time. Um, but all, all you need to do, uh, there would either be that build trend or the broadcast transaction button if you were still on the prior screen, or you can simply come up to the tools menu and say transaction broadcaster tools and then transaction broadcaster. And so what we want to do is import a transaction and we will go to our uh, signed, partially signed Bitcoin transaction file. We'll go ahead and hit open. And we can see that it is imported successfully. Uh, we've got the all the same amounts that we were previously working with. And so now I can go ahead and hit broadcast transaction. And Wasabi will now securely broadcast through Tor to the Bitcoin network. And there you have it. So I've sent. Now it will probably take some time to, uh, to confirm, right? Uh, given that I chose to wait a bit for the uh, for a bit, little bit lower fees. Uh, but there you have it. So we'll go ahead and end this tutorial here, and I'll close the video out uh, in just a moment. All right, gang, well done. Congratulations, you are now pros at using the cold card in combination with Wasabi Wallet. Uh, just to recap a bit on what we covered, we looked at how to kind of instantiate uh, your cold card in Wasabi, basically using Wasabi as the interface uh, through which to see your balance of your cold card wallet, as well as receive funds uh, to that wallet. We then looked at how to conduct partially signed Bitcoin transactions using your cold card uh, as the device that you know signs your private key to the transaction. And then we take that back to Wasabi through the micro SD card and broadcast that transaction to the Bitcoin network. So very cool stuff. Um, now, what we didn't cover is a world in which, you know, that was obviously a lot of back and forth. Uh, as I mentioned at the outset of the video, you know, the cold card really should be your your like main savings account. You know, this is something where you're gonna put most of your stack um, and you really don't intend to kind of move funds out of it all that much. Uh, and so when you do, maybe it's not that big of a deal to do this kind of back and forth with the micro SD. That being said, keep in mind, you can still, uh, you know, you can still directly plug your cold card into uh, your laptop. And then what would happen is everything's essentially the same, except when you're ready to send funds from your cold card wallet, um, because it's directly plugged into your computer, presumably, you, what you'll see is a message that comes up and says, you know, hey, here's the here's the transaction details. Uh, is this okay? And so you you have to click okay, um, and and so you know less roundabout. Um, however, keep in mind the pros and cons of a fully air gapped uh, interaction model with your cold card versus one that is connecting it to an internet connected device. Uh, you can never be too safe. And so uh, we'll leave this video here for now. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. If you did, you already know what to do. Give this video a like, uh, share with your friends uh, so that more folks can up their uh, Bitcoin privacy and security game. Uh, as always, I'm excited to be on this journey with you guys. And um, you know, in future videos, if you'd like to see uh, any topics, write it in the comments down below. Uh, I've got a queue of ideas from some of you, so thank you for those who have uh, who have commented. Uh, but with that, we'll go ahead and leave this video here for now. As always, every sack counts. And until next time, I'll see you.